my channel welcome back to another video i'm jesse and you're watching welcome to an experimental video in this video you are going to see me a lowly booktuber attempt to mimic the lifestyle habits schedule presentation and reading of queen chloe of books with chloe So this is the start of a series that I've been very excited to do on bow ties and books where I pick a booktuber or y'all as my viewers vote on a booktuber for me to impersonate the lifestyle of for a full seven days. And I really wanted to start this series off with Chloe of Books with Chloe because Chloe is just booktube goals. She is such a sweet and wonderful person, but also is just like the queen, the very epitome of aesthetic. Nobody can slay aesthetic and vibes the way that Chloe does. And so I knew that there was absolutely no way I couldn't start this series off with her. I also am lucky enough to get to call Chloe a friend. And so I thought it would be really, really fun to mimic her schedule in particular. So the other reason that I wanted to start the series off with her was so that I could get started with somebody that I'm already familiar with and friendly with because it can be so intimidating to step into somebody else's skin um, as you're gonna see in this video. The start of making this video I DM Chloe and she gave me a schedule and in this video you are going to see me attempt to mimic this schedule. <laughs> After you watch this video, comment down below with other booktubers that you would like to see me attempt to mimic the lifestyles and reading schedules. Y'all are in for a wild ride and I'm not going to delay it any longer. Without further ado, let us get into the video. Bruh, what the fuck is color corrector? Why my color need to be corrected? I don't understand. What is this stuff? Okay, so Chloe does this lipstick and lip liner thing. And here's $13. 13, never mind. Um, 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 oh wait, here's us on the, on the bottom. Okay, it took some, it took some finding because like I said, we're, on the bottom. Okay, so what? <laughs> what's my color? I'm not warm sand. I think this is me, a golden tan. I'm like a mix between these two, but I think it would be safer to go darker because I don't want to be one of those people that looks, you know, their face is all washed out. We're not, that's not where we want to live. So we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with her. Now we're gonna buy some eyeliner. Oh, LOL, black metal, me in high school. Hydrating Jelly Primer, and it's $17. Is this lube? This is lube. Oh, uh, wait, I like this better because this is much less expensive than the one I just picked out, so we're gonna try again. Okay, so, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm somewhere between cappuccino and latte, so one of these, I wish I had y'all with me to tell me what color my skin is, I think, no. Who am I? Okay, I'm coconut and they're out. So, and this is too dark for me, unfortunately. Like the, oh God, this sucks. And then meanwhile, you know, it, with all of their stuff in stock, give me something for the pain and just let me die. Okay, who is wearing their eyebrows for two days? Girl, wash your face. Rollerblade o'clock with the dog.
What up y'all? Back from rollerblading, had a little snack. So I finished the turnout by Megan Abbott, which was one of our most anticipated releases. Really, really enjoyed it. Gave it four out of five stars. It was good. It was very, very good. And then I started, I resumed Sabrina and Karina, which I am reading for just like Latinx Heritage Month. Very, very excited. And now the face is washed. My hair is back. Hello. Hi, I missed you. Now I'm going to be starting Usumaki, which we all know is just Chloe's fave. I'm about to hop on private stream with Jan. I just love me some Jan. I'm so excited for tomorrow. I just cannot wait. And tomorrow I will be painting these nails and I, I hate painting my nails. So shoot me. <laughs> Screaming! Okay, so we're talking, and I was about to show you the book that you know we were just quoting because you're like, "What book is that from?" So I look to my right, which is where the book is fucking sitting. Okay, so I'm gonna just show the viewers what I fucking see. It just okay. So there is a dead <laughs> fucking moth, and it like just. It just died. It was not there a second ago. So, like, when you and I were talking, a moth da -da 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 -da, felt, like, flew and then just died on my copy of Usumaki. That is not a good fucking omen. But, like, why are y'all still sitting there? <laughs> Jan, come move it. Come get it. Get it. Akasha, eat it. Akasha doesn't protect me. She doesn't care about anything. <laughs> Right before bed, you're gonna read Uzumaki. Good luck. Life is a nightmare. Okay. I'm just a kid and life is a nightmare. I'm just a kid and I don't know it's happening. Jan is just watching us freak out. This book is so gross it's so gross and it's triggering my insect phobia and it's so shocking jan it's so gross and we were ready i was ready for the horror i thought that i was prepared okay i'm on page 63 and i'm shaking shaking and this is the i'm gonna do this uh, I saw it again.
am so tired, y'all. It is two in the morning. I have completed my first successful day living as Books with Chloe and got so much good reading done. As of right now, we're on chapter five of Uzumaki and it is so good. I physically have to stop myself from reading further because I have to get up early to do yoga. I have a doctor's appointment. I have to edit a video to get it up a sap. I'm gonna see y'all in the morning. Time for Tuesday. Good morning. I haven't finished the look yet. This is just the foundation and I love love the foundation. I get to finish the rest of the look and I'll check in when it's done. <sighs> I look like the nightmare before Christmas. Oh my God. I just got it all over my eye. Ugh, Chloe. I, I, <sighs> okay. So I finally got them on. <sighs> it took me an hour. Funk. I still have to do the highlighting and the contouring and then my hair. Oh my God. <laughs> I just want to be ugly. <laughs> this is the final product. Uh, I don't know who I am. I don't recognize myself. There's a lot wrong with this makeup. I feel like technique wise, I feel like I didn't do great. Uh, so please don't look too closely at it or I'm sure that you can see how jacked up and like uneven it is. But um, yeah. Oh my God, this is so weird. It's really interesting because Chloe's style and mine is very similar, but it also differs in key ways. For example, I enjoy wearing jewelry, but I'll wear like, a couple necklaces. Chloe will layer that shit up, okay? And then rings, we don't usually wear rings. Obviously we don't wear full face of makeup. Definitely don't wear false lashes. I usually go with like a nude lipstick. Uh, yeah, so this is weird. This is so weird. It's so freaking weird. It's really fun. It feels like I'm wearing a costume. It's really, really fun. I like this makeup look a lot. Let me know what y'all think. Um, Chloe's eyes are like even more gorgeous and dramatic, but there was no way, like, <laughs> this is what you get. This is what you get. So going to continue the read of Uzumaki, gonna take Akasha on a much needed walk. And um, I also have to edit a video and have it up by 2 p.m. So that is um, gonna start doing that. And I will check in with y'all in a little bit. This look took two hours. It took two hours. was Black Top Wasteland. And it was so good, it just automatically skyrocketed him to one of my auto buy authors. So he is a black thriller author and I just really, really dig his works. They are like action mystery and I'm so excited about this.
so tonight's dinner is kind of an experiment. I have linguine here and I am steaming broccoli over here and I'm going to um, be using just some canned creamy basil alfredo that I will season and I'm gonna add broccoli and sauteed mushrooms. I'm gonna add some steak as well as some peas. We have our steak and mushroom sauce is cooking and then this is the broccoli that has been sauteed after being steamed. Time for some Paranorman. And the food is ready. Looks so good. Good morning. Welcome to day three of living life as Chloe from Books with Chloe. So this is how the makeup look of the day turned out. We wanted to step it up a bit and go with something dramatic. So we did really dark eyebrows and a green look. Personally, I like the green on me. I really, really dig it. We had yet another struggle with these lashes. If you look like really closely, you can see that they're not perfectly adhered, which is no surprise. The eyebrows aren't as even as we would have wanted them to be. Chloe is so good at getting just twins as eyebrows. I feel like this one is really good. So just only look at this eyebrow. But yeah, overall, very, very happy with how this look turned out. Just, I really, really dig it. It's so weird wearing a bra, like an actual bra. I have not worn a real bra that wasn't a sports bra or like a bra bikini in years. So this feels this feels weird. Everything is so high and pushed together. Um, literally, like getting out of bed today. <laughs> I went through the seven stages of grief, okay? An envy was bargaining. I went through rage. And finally, after two hours of crying, I settled on acceptance and got out of bed and put this look together. This time it only took an hour. So we're making progress. As far as today goes, very, very excited. So yesterday I ended up stopping Paranorman because I realized, I checked my Patreon and realized that my patrons voted for Norman as the monthly buddy watch. So I'm so excited to have that Netflix party. Uh, what I did see from Paranorman, I absolutely loved. I started that one because I know it's one of Chloe's favorite movies. I only got like 15 minutes in and I was absolutely obsessed. So I cannot wait for that Netflix party. So I have yoga at four. And then right after that, a buddy is going to come over. We're gonna get some food. We're gonna play with the puppy. And then we're going to go see Shang-Chi. Now, if you've been following me on our Instagram, you know that this will be our fourth time seeing Wenwu. I mean Shang-Chi. Wenwu, I am obsessed. We wanna be Wenwu for Halloween so bad like so freaking bad i just i want to be wen Wu in real life and in halloween so bad i'm absolutely obsessed with him just what an amazing villain i just mm. so i'm planning this halloween costume i i need something very specific in order to pull it off so i don't know if it's gonna happen <sighs> But I'm hoping and I'm praying and I just want to see Wen Wu and just like hold him in my paws. I think that he's so precious. But I love this movie for so many other reasons. I'm just absolutely obsessed. So I cannot freaking wait to continue on and watch it for a fourth freaking time. And then we're going to go to an arcade and play some games. Gaming is a big, big part of Chloe's life. And I have become pretty obsessed with the arcade as of late. Um, my go-to games are Marvel v Capcom and of course X-Men. We always play as Colossus and we throw it down. I have beaten the X-Men game four times, once, twice in one sitting. So you know how it be. So freaking excited to go and um, hit up this arcade with my buddy. She is amazing. And we're just gonna go and have a lot of fun together. So I'm about to take some Chloe thirst traps. I might make a TikTok. I don't know if I'm gonna feel comfortable making a TikTok because I feel like this makeup look has so much to be desired. But then again, as somebody who does not really wear makeup, I feel like I did a really good job. Like. I do wear makeup, I will darken my eyebrows, I'll throw on mascara, and I'll do foundation and like a tinted lip gloss. This is not even the full Chloe makeup routine. It's insane. I have so much freaking respect for Chloe. Do y'all realize how hard Chloe works? I, I hope y'all do. Like I knew Chloe worked hard, but this, 
girl at the end of this chloe i don't even want to be your friend no more okay i don't want to see you every time i see chloe from now until the end of time in one of her gorgeous makeup looks i'm just gonna shiver yeah so that's what we have going on today so you're gonna see a lot of b-roll i don't even know if i'm gonna get any reading done but uzumaki five out of five stars Apparently, there is a USA adaptation of it, and I really want to watch it, but I'm scared. I'm scared. So I did get the emails answered. I'm very, very excited, very proud of that. And right now, I'm going to film some stuff and take some Chloe Thirst Trap photos, which means they're going to be very awkward. It's so funny because Chloe is just so effortlessly <laughs> attractive and i'm just more of a like hey i'm three trash cans wearing a trench coat you know what i'm saying like that's my brand and so it's really weird trying to look cute in front of a camera because chloe don't even have to try because she's the queen you know what i'm saying but yes this is fun i actually really like even though my eyelashes looked better and also like this hair keeps getting in my mouth my big ass lips like how do y'all do this like silky haired people how do you stand it this makes me glad that my hair is kinky because my hair it stays away from my face it like it's allergic to my face and it's great because it's not i was like trying to put on mascara the fucking hair was getting caught in my eyelashes you know it's a freaking crime scene over here everything itches because the hair keeps brushing i i don't like it i hate it here but and Envy does look cute though. One of myself really, really enjoys this presentation and obviously this is not how we present often. So one of myself is thriving in particular right now and the rest of us are just like, all right, y'all, that is gonna do it for this update. I will check in with you later. Bye. <laughs>
Today, I actually managed to wake up a few minutes before the alarm, which was a godsend, and woke up, just took the puppy for a long walk, and then promptly began cleaning the house. Do you ever just wake up? You think today is the day. Today is the day to <laughs> bleach the walls and to get into every nook and cranny. So cleaned for a couple of hours and then went out and ran some errands with the puppy. Now we are home, so I wanna show off some of the things that were picked up at Target. But also we need to vent because we had to stop at the bank uh, to get a to get a new debit card and the teller says hey unfortunately our system is down it just went down and I can't say when it's going to be back up so you'll have to come back later and I was like cool no worries you know these things happen and it was not at all a big deal this person is not responsible for the system there's no reason to be like up in arms about it like they have nothing to apologize for in in my opinion as I was saying again like hey don't worry about it there's this dude just yelling in the next aisle. He's like, what do you mean? Just so upset. And what do people gain from being mean and unkind to customer service personnel? It will never make sense to me. I do understand that it is frustrating not to be able to access your money and do your business. Like I do understand it. he could have been going through something. I just hate when people take things out on others. It brought annoyance into the day. So I vented about it. I let it out into the universe. And now we're going to move on with just having a beautiful, spectacular day. So I would love to show off some of the things that were picked up at Target. Target's candles are usually pretty pricey, but they had a bunch of candles that were only four bucks or 350. So this one is a coconut plum crumble. It's brown sugar and almond flavored. And this is the tin. It smells it smells really freaking good. I very much enjoyed this candle. I feel like that would be really good for a bath night. And then I picked up two of these candied pecan candles. They're so big and they were only five bucks. And I love the double wick candles. I just, and I love candles that are pretty big and open. So I got two of those as well as a sweet pea candle. It smells a bit like laundry, like fresh laundry. A cousin passed away very recently and we picked up another altar candle in order to help his transition into being an ancestor. So very excited to put this on the altar and burn it. Quick reading update. Uzumaki, for the purposes of this video, I'm forcing myself not to be in a reading slump, but I have no desire to read any of the books that I'm reading right now. It's not because they're not good. I'm in the middle of a bunch of books. I'm reading Yoke. I'm reading Goblin. I'm reading White Smoke. I am reading Infinite Country. I'm reading Grievers. Like so many books. Almost all of them are spooky. Oh, The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. Reading so many books and they are all very, very good. Okay, a couple are mediocre. But for the most part, very, very good. Cannot stop thinking about Uzumaki. And, and so this is the first time in my entire life that I've ever read a book that was just purely horror that I could not stop thinking about. All I wanna do is reread this book. And I, be, I, I completely see the hype. I completely see the craze and the cult following that this author has and that this book has. It all makes sense. It's, it's just a spooky story, but at the same time, it's more than just a spooky story. I just want to reread Uzumaki. I don't want to read any of these books. I actually, the reason why it's not in this room is because I put it above my bed. We sleep with it now. But I should talk about White Smoke, which I am reading and very much enjoying the latest from Tiffany D. Jackson. This was probably number two on my list of anticipated releases. I never officially released that list, but I am keeping track of it in my Google Docs. And this of course is like Get Out meets Haunting of Hill House. I love, love a haunted house story. One of our favorite tropes. And um, I love that we have a protagonist who is messy and has gone through a lot and is in recovery and is healing from a lot of trauma and also like has a really severe bed bug phobia. And I just really appreciate having a black girl protagonist that has a phobia. I can always count on TDJ for providing the representation that I didn't know that I needed. And the book is really, really good. It's spooky, it's frustrating. You know, you can, you as the reader can see what's happening. You're like, girl, get out of the house. Why are you still here? This whole situation is a big no. It's a big no and you need to get up out of there. So it's still pretty early on in the day. I'm going to get ready and then answer some emails. I'll check in with y'all when this face is, um, is transformed. This is the look that we're working with today. This is a red, white, and black 
plaid mini dress and then rocking a jean jacket. I noticed while editing that the makeup looks that I've been doing aren't as dramatic as Chloe does. She really packs on like layers her eyeshadow in this super pretty way. And also I was wearing the eyeshadow up too high. She kind of leaves like a, a good gap. Also her lashes that she does are like mo more bold than the ones that we have been doing. So this is our improved Chloe look. What do y'all think? Um, we also went heavier on our bronzer and highlighter than we did before. We still aren't doing blush because I, I, I have no idea how to apply blush. I also don't even own blush and I don't think I'm, I'm going to buy it. Uh, yeah, I hope you like it. I know you're all like, mm, Chloe's signature look is a red. Yes, that is very, very true, but really into the green. Like it's giving me poison ivy. I wanna get a green lipstick, like a matte green to go with it. So far, the biggest part of this experiment is that I actually really like how my face looks with green makeup on it. That's shocking. And it's interesting because makeup gives me a lot of dysphoria, but I'm finding that the right makeup gives me gender euphoria. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. So this look that I have right now is the one that I'm the most comfortable with. I'm genuinely really pleased with it. And this is a look that I would actually wear on my own. Also, another thing that I've noticed, cause Chloe often will do this off the shoulder look with her jaquetas. And I'm finding that I really, really enjoy that look. It's not, it would never have occurred to me if I wasn't trying to imitate the beautiful queen. But this is also something that I would vibe with. The multiple necklaces are growing on me. I don't think it could ever be an everyday thing. The rings also could never be an everyday thing. I'm just, I, I, I have learned that I'm definitely, I don't wear rings for a reason. Yeah, and I'm also getting a little bit more comfortable having straight wavy hair. I know Chloe's hair is like much longer and like super straight, but- Wigs are expensive. And did not feel like going out and buying a whole new wig. Although that would definitely make the look like even cooler. I think I personally would wear this outfit with maybe like not a dress and my natural curly hair. I think that that is the, the way that I would personally rock this look. But what do y'all think? I really like it. I really, really like it. And it still does feel weird though. It still feels like, I'm just not used to seeing my face with this much makeup on it. And I, I think I actually look really nice and I'm feeling myself. So wanted to give a quick reading update. Switched to Wonderland by Zoe Stage. It is so good, like a very creepy, Family moves from New York City out way into the middle of nowhere and there's this really creepy tree that kind of told the husband to move to the house and when the kids, because the kids weren't there when they, the husband and the wife viewed the house, <laughs> the first thing that the little girl does when she gets out of the car as they're moving in and sees the tree is look at it and then run, basically run screaming into the house. And the mom is like, huh, was there smoke in the distance that startled her? Was there perhaps something like a squirrel that she's coming up with all these possibilities? And I'm like, and the, 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 okay. There's already been multiple red flags. But ain't nobody listened to me, it's fine. And also the writing's super, super good. So only on page 25, but very, very much enjoying it. So there's this package here from Cake Worthy that we ordered and have been waiting to unbox. And I'm going to wait, make myself wait a little bit longer so that I can unbox it on camera with Jan. I'm so excited to have my Jane be the first person to see what's in this bag. I have been waiting so long. Gorgeous Mama Bowties sent this mysterious box. And she said that it was a Halloween present because my mother knows how big I am into Halloween. Oh, also it did not take as long to apply these lashes. The amount of time it took to get this look on was about 45 minutes to an hour. And I think that was because I was on FaceTime with a friend and like putting on the face while talking to him. So I think also that I'm getting better at doing the makeup. Ooh. All right, so the first, what is this? was it? oh it was my book haul so just recently posted a book haul it'll be linked down below in the book haul i hold up this let me see if i can find it hold on i hold up this <laughs> this notebook that mom sent and i was talking about how she always sends very colorful very glittery thing as a way of trying to convert me into enjoying color and glitter things that are feminine coded right and my whole life i've been like mom i don't like this because they're gifts from my mother i will always keep it and 
She keeps sending, like she keeps buying me neon clothes. We'll go shopping and she will sneak something into the cart and then I won't even notice it until I get home. It's just, it's just become our personalities at this point. This is what, this is what my mom sent. It is, it looks like confetti. Like this couldn't possibly be more colorful and it's freaking nail polish. It's freaking nail polish. So I freaking bought this black nail polish for the Chloe look. As you can see, I still haven't painted the nails because I, I'm really dreading it. I hate having my nails painted. I, I like having my toenails painted. I hate having my nails painted. So I'm stalling. And I think what I'm gonna do is incorporate this into the nail polish. I'm dying, I love my mother. My mom is amazing. Um, okay, so what is... Yo! Oh my god, mom, you're gonna make me cry on camera. <sighs> okay, so she sent these bow tie hair clips and they have little skeletons. And I'm crying in the corner. She also sent these fairy witch false lashes that have bow ties on them. And I'm crying in the club. She sent more hair clips that have cleavers on them. And I'm gonna put these down because I'm not crying on camera. You know why I'm not crying on camera? Because this took me an hour. I'm gonna call my mom right after this. So the next thing I'm gonna unbox, I'm literally not gonna think about any of that because I will fucking cry. I miss my mom so much. She lives in a different state and we don't get to see her until November. We're gonna spend Thanksgiving together. <sighs> I'm not gonna cry. This makeup is too expensive to cry off, let's be honest. This is a package from the publisher. What is this? Ooh, yes, ew, why did I sound like Alexis from Schitt's Creek? Hand poured in Los Angeles coconut wax candle. This is black bamboo red currant. I love red currant, I love the scent and I, Oh, that like literally gave me chills. Ooh, this smells really good. And it's from the Black Girls Must Die exhausted um, package. Okay, I need you to cooperate. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, that's gonna do it for this update. I'm going to go call my mother and try not to cry. We'll check in with y'all in a bit. have some book mail y'all we got some book mail in the house i'm so excited to open some book mail it's literally the only mail that matters book mail is the reason that we get out of bed in the morning so this first book oh okay so this first book is the latest from lars kepler it is from the killer instinct series and it is called lazarus sometimes the past won't stay buried hopefully i won't want to bury myself after reading this book a string of brutal murders have taken out a series of ruthless criminals and the police are dutifully investigating so definitely like a police investigation novel which are novels that i can actually really enjoy if they are well done and yeah so it looks like an action thriller and i'm ready but i want lots of gore and it's little font so the font is really tiny and it's 400 and some pages so this sounds like a cozy winter read yo oh my god this is 
gorgeous stop okay so was sent an arc of black girls must be magic from the author who wrote black girls must die exhausted and we got sent this amazing package boosting black girls must die exhausted it, it had a tote it has a pop socket here this is actually the pop socket it was literally one of the coolest packages if not the coolest package i've ever received literally all of the items in it i still use to this day i'm really excited about this book and this gorgeous freaking cover i actually think i like this even better than the cover for black girls must die exhausted and we find out that our protagonist has a baby on the way and i know a lot of people really don't like the surprise pregnancy trope for me i've never read it so i i don't have any opinions for me like off the top of my head i would say okay like no big deal why would that be something i personally wouldn't like because Pregnancies can come as a surprise all the time. Personally, I have no feels about this trope and I'm excited to actually get to read a book with it, especially a book that centers around black girls and their lives. So I'm very geeked about this. Okay, so the next book that we have, oh, okay, 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 yes. Okay, so the next book that we have here is Cherish for Ra, a novel by Brittany C. Morrow, who wrote A Song Below Water. That's the uh, black girl magic slash contemporary uh, siren book that I still want to read for the uh, the black girl magic series. I think there's two books out or there's two books in that duology. It's a duology. Why am I saying it? <laughs> okay. In this book, we're following a 17 year old black girl named Farah and she is one of only two black girls in her country club community and the only one with black parents. So this is actually a slow burn social horror and I'm very excited. I don't want to read too much into it, but this sounds really freaking good and it comes out on February 8th, which means that this is 100% going to be on my TBR for either December or January because I want to get to this book before it comes out. Definitely going to be reading this for a Thriller Thursday video, which is this series that I have on my channel. I think there's four videos out in it where I review thrillers and horror books on Thursdays. So I'm really freaking excited about this. I'm super stoked about this because the publisher reached out and asked if I wanted a copy and it is from an author that isn't really getting hyped and it sounds phenomenal. This is a piece of horror written by a Latinx man and I just cannot freaking wait. In this book we are following a young boy whose name is Erasmo Cruz and his father recently died of an overdose and Erasmo is described as like a boy from the wrong side of the tracks and so this is a YA horror book about him setting up shop as a paranormal investigator I believe to pay for his abuelita's medical bills I'm just really excited about this book. I like to know very little about my thriller and horror books going into them. So we're just gonna, we're just, we're just gonna stop there. But this sounds really good. And it released on October 26th of this year. Two more packages here. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot that I ordered this. I was like, okay, I, that awkward moment when you order a book for yourself and then it gets sent to you. But I bought this off of Pango Books where you can sell your own books and then buy books from other sellers. And when you sell books on Pango, you get what's called Pango Bucks. So you can like withdraw the money or you can just leave your money in Pango and then buy books with the money that you've earned from selling books. I don't know why I'm explaining this so poorly, but the point is the book that I purchased was The Chain. This is my friend Jordy's, like one of his favorite thrillers. And so I absolutely had to have it. And I've heard zero people say zero bad things about this book. Like it's five out of five stars for everyone who has read it. And I really want to read this and review it for a Thriller Thursday video. But also I'm thinking of doing a video where I read red and black books with red and black covers. I don't know why, just because it's a, it's a color combination that I really enjoy. So the last book is called Ready When You Are. It is by Gary Lonesborough. And I have no idea what this is about. Oh, okay, so Jackson is a teenage boy living in the Mish, an Aboriginal community in Australia. He feels like he's got everything under control when Tomas comes along. He's a mysterious boy with a troubled past and he's taken in by Jackson's aunt. Man, I hope that this gets gay. Um, oh, wait, it gets gay. Okay, Jackson's never let himself love before, not the way he's starting to love Tomas. Okay, okay. Ooh, maybe I need to add this to my November TBR. <gasps> and it's a debut novel. I'm adding this to my November TBR. I'm about to throw everything away that I know and adding it to my November TBR. I want to read this so bad. 
Okay, so this book doesn't release until 20, 2022, and I don't care. I'm going to be reading this in November. Like, I don't care. And I have some news as far as this video. This video is what we're going to call a failed experiment because, yo, I was having so much anxiety about finishing up this video because I learned something very, very important while doing this experiment, and it was that I physically cannot handle presenting and dressing as another person. After day five, I physically was like, I'm absolutely done with this. Like I kept trying to find the energy to resume filming for this experiment and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I wanted my clothes. I wanted my own presentation back. Like I just, I physically couldn't do it. And I was having so much anxiety about, about trying to dress up as Chloe. However, I'm thrilled that I did this experiment because that's something that I learned about myself. I learned that I am very, very, very attracted and attached to my clothes. Doing this experiment oddly reinvigorated my self-love and my love for the way that I dress and present. And it's really interesting because I didn't think that trying to emulate someone else's lifestyle would cause me to become more rooted in my own. And so as a result, I ended up changing my Instagram feed. so much more like me and it feels more like home. Now I absolutely loved following Chloe's schedule. I got so much work done. That made me really happy. I loved every part of this experiment, like every part of this experiment except for uh, trying to dress in somebody else's style. It was fun for a couple days and then and then it was not it was not fun anymore. So I think what I'm gonna do for future videos in this series is to not try and dress like the people that I'm following the schedules of. I'll read the kind of genres that they like and like the books that they recommend, but I'm too attached to my clothes. They make me way too happy and I get way too much gender dysphoria from not wearing the things that like I specifically want and need to wear on that day. You know what I'm saying? And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, Jessie, Chloe's been into romance books like for a minute. And yes, that is so true, but I'm actually in the middle. I'm actually at the end of filming a dedicated adult romance, like reading adult romance vlog for the first time. And so I just wanted to stick to thrillers in this video. Although I didn't do much reading in this video because I was having <laughs> too much anxiety. One thing I learned from doing this video though is that I'm absolutely obsessed with green makeup. I wanted to do my green eyeshadow look for this clip, but I'm about to get in my car and go see Jan and I did not want to drive six hours at night wearing a full face of makeup. But what do y'all think of the green lipstick? I'm absolutely obsessed. I literally wear it every day now. And I don't think I would have experimented with makeup in this way if I hadn't decided to do this experiment. So I just, I'm so glad that I did it and I can't wait to keep doing this experiment. I don't know when the next time I'm gonna do another one of these videos is because it's a lot, like it's a whole freaking production, but I had so much fun. To Chloe, if you're watching this, thank you so much for sending your schedule. And like, this was seriously so much fun. Chloe, literally no one can do what you do and they damn sure can't do it the way that you do. You are incredible. Like you put in so much work and just like, I see you, I feel you. I love that you're out there thriving, living your best life. Like I, I know I am wicked proud of you and I know that the book community is too. And it has been so beautiful to get to watch your journey here on booktube and it just like means a lot that you thought this idea was fun and that i got to start this series off with you if you enjoyed this video why don't you comment down below and drop the names of a booktuber that you'd like to see me do next in this series i really really want to do kayla from books and lala why did i phrase it that way that's not what i meant i think i just need to end i i i need food I need food. I need to get on the road. I'm just so flustered. I have a Patreon, which is in my description box if you are interested, but all of my social media links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, and I hope to see you in my next one.